The drug trafficking world was shaken on July 25, 2024. Ismael El Mayo Zambada, a titan of the Sinaloa cartel, was arrested. This wasn't just another arrest, El Mayo was a legend, a phantom who had evaded authorities for over five decades. His influence on the drug trade, particularly in his home country of Mexico, was immense. He was the last of a dying breed, a symbol of the old guard of cartel leaders. El Mayo's arrest marked a turning point in the story of the Sinaloa cartel and the broader war on drugs. It signified the potential collapse of an empire built on cocaine, heroin, and marijuana trafficking. With El Chapo behind bars and El Mayo apprehended, the future of the cartel was uncertain. Would it crumble under its own weight, or would a new leader rise from the ashes? The official narrative, while seemingly straightforward, left many questions unanswered. Inconsistencies and gaps in the timeline fueled suspicion. Rumors swirled, each more outlandish than the last. Had El Mayo struck a deal with the DEA? Was he betrayed by his own people? Three primary theories emerged, each attempting to explain the circumstances of El Mayo's arrest. These theories, while intriguing, were just that, theories. They were built on speculation, insider information, and a healthy dose of skepticism towards official narratives. The first theory suggested a brazen kidnapping orchestrated by El Chapo's own son. The second pointed to a rogue DEA operation, a violation of Mexican sovereignty. And the third, perhaps the most plausible, spoke of a deal, a final act of desperation from a dying man. Unraveling the truth behind El Mayo's arrest required navigating a complex web of information, misinformation, and outright propaganda. It demanded a critical eye, an understanding of the players involved, and a healthy skepticism towards any single narrative. The world of drug trafficking is notoriously opaque, shrouded in secrecy, and fueled by violence. To understand the events leading up to El Mayo's arrest, one must delve into the history of the Sinaloa cartel, its internal power struggles, and its complex relationship with the DEA. This is not a simple story of cops and robbers. It's a saga of betrayal, ambition, and the high cost of power. We know that consuming news can be a challenge due to the diverse ideologies and perspectives that each of us may have. However, there is a tool for this problem. Ground News, the sponsor of this video and the tool that helped me to contrast much of the information presented here and in other videos, we recommend you subscribe. The first theory we'll explore is the one presented to the public by El Mayo's own lawyer, Frank Perez. This narrative paints a picture of a daring kidnapping orchestrated by none other than Joaquin Guzman Lopez, one of El Chapo's sons. According to Perez, El Mayo was lured into a trap, ambushed, and whisked away to the United States against his will. The story as told by Perez is as dramatic as it is shocking. He claims that El Mayo was taken by force from a meeting in Culiacan, subdued by armed men dressed in military fatigues. They bound him, threw him into a truck, and transported him to a waiting plane. The audacity of the operation, if true, is staggering. This version of events suggests a power struggle within the Sinaloa cartel, a brazen move by El Chapo's son to consolidate his own power. It implies that El Mayo, despite his legendary status, was vulnerable, a target for ambitious rivals within his own organization. But is this narrative, as compelling as it may seem, truly credible? Section 2, a deeper dive unraveling the details. Journalists Joan Grillo and Juan Alberto Tadillo, known for their in-depth coverage of the cartel world, dug deeper into the official narrative. They uncovered additional details, painting a more intricate picture of the alleged kidnapping. Their sources, including a former member of El Mayo's security team, provided a more granular account of the events. According to their investigation, El Mayo had traveled to Culiacan for medical reasons and was scheduled to meet with Joaquin Guzman Lopez and a Sinaloan politician, Hector Malacio Quint. However, the meeting was a ruse, a carefully orchestrated trap set by El Chapo's son. Upon arriving at the designated location, El Mayo and his bodyguards were ambushed by Guzman Lopez's men. The assailants overpowered El Mayo's security detail, leaving several bodyguards missing. El Mayo was then driven to a ranch, forced onto a plane, and flown to the United States. 
The operation, as described, was precise, professional, and executed with chilling efficiency. But even with these added details, doubts lingered. Section 3 Cracks in the Facade Inconsistencies Arise Despite the detailed accounts provided by Perez and corroborated by Grillo and Cedillo, inconsistencies began to emerge. One glaring discrepancy involved the murder of Hector Malacio Cuen, the politician who was supposed to meet with El Mayo. Cuen was killed on the same day as El Mayo's arrest, gunned down in an apparent robbery. While authorities claimed the murder was unrelated to El Mayo's capture, the timing was too coincidental to ignore. It raised the possibility that Cuen's death was not a random act of violence, but rather a calculated move by Guzman Lopez to silence a potential witness or eliminate a rival within the cartel. Further investigation into the flight path of the plane that transported El Mayo revealed additional discrepancies. Initial reports claimed the plane departed from Hermosillo, Sonora. However, evidence emerged suggesting the plane actually took off from Chihuahua, a detail that contradicted the official narrative. These inconsistencies, while seemingly minor, cast doubt on the overall credibility of the kidnapping story. They suggested that the truth was more complicated, that there were hidden motives and players yet to be revealed. Section 4. The Silence After the Storm, A Glaring Omission The lack of retaliation from El Mayo's faction within the Sinaloa cartel was compelling evidence against the kidnapping theory. El Mayo's son, Mayito Flaco, was a powerful figure. It seemed unfathomable that he would allow such an attack on his father to go unanswered. The Sinaloa cartel was known for its swift and brutal response to threats. When Ovidio Guzman was captured, the cartel unleashed violence, forcing his release. The lack of a similar response for El Mayo was telling. It suggested a more nuanced situation than a simple kidnapping. A rogue operation. Did the DEA cross the line? The second theory surrounding El Mayo's arrest is as controversial as it is intriguing. It suggests that El Mayo and El Chapo's son were apprehended not by Mexican authorities or rival cartel members, but by U.S. DEA agents operating illegally on Mexican soil. This theory, while seemingly far-fetched, gains traction when considering past transgressions in the murky world of drug enforcement. I dismiss the official narrative as a fabrication a carefully constructed lie designed to mask a blatant violation of Mexican sovereignty. The DEA, driven by its mandate to dismantle the Sinaloa cartel, resorted to extraordinary and illegal measures to secure El Mayo's capture. This theory hinges on the belief that the DEA, with its vast resources and international reach, is capable of operating outside the law when it deems necessary. It suggests that the agency, in its pursuit of justice or perhaps driven by other motives, is willing to disregard international norms and bilateral agreements. If true, this would represent a serious breach of trust between the United States and Mexico. It would raise questions about the extent of U.S. influence within Mexico and the lengths to which its agencies are willing to go to achieve their objectives. The theory of a rogue DEA operation is not without precedent. In 1990, Dr. Humberto Alvarez Machain was kidnapped from his office in Guadalajara. The kidnappers were working for the DEA. Machain was accused of torturing and murdering DEA agent Enrique Kiki Camarena but was released. The case sent shockwaves through U.S.-Mexico relations. It exposed the DEA's willingness to operate outside the law. The U.S. government eventually apologized, but the incident left a lasting scar. Several key details surrounding El Mayo's extradition remain shrouded in mystery, fueling speculation about the DEA's potential involvement. The plane used to transport El Mayo and El Chapo's son, a Beechcraft King Air 250, has become a focal point of the investigation. According to reports, the plane's registration number was cloned, a common tactic used by drug traffickers to evade detection. If the DEA was indeed involved in El Mayo's capture, the use of a plane with a cloned registration raises several questions. Did the DEA knowingly use a plane with false documentation? If so, who supplied the aircraft and what was their motive? The answers to these questions could shed light on the extent of the DEA's involvement and the potential complicity of other actors. Furthermore, the identity of the pilots who flew the plane remains unknown. 
Were they DEA agents operating undercover? Or were they private contractors hired for the job? The pilots, if found, could provide valuable information about the operation and those who orchestrated it. The lack of transparency surrounding the plane, the pilots, and the cloned registration only adds to the suspicion surrounding El Mayo's arrest. It suggests that there is more to the story than meets the eye, that powerful forces may be working to conceal the truth. Section 4, A Bridge Too Far? the limits of U.S. power in Mexico. While the theory of a rogue DEA operation is both intriguing and plausible, it's important to consider the potential ramifications. If proven true, such an act would represent a grave breach of trust between the United States and Mexico. It would undermine Mexican sovereignty and could severely damage bilateral cooperation in the fight against drug trafficking. The Mexican government, already grappling with corruption and the violence associated with the drug war, would face immense pressure to respond forcefully to any perceived violation of its sovereignty. A diplomatic crisis potentially leading to a reduction in intelligence sharing or even a suspension of joint operations would be a setback for both countries. Furthermore, the DEA's credibility would be severely tarnished if it were revealed that the agency had engaged in illegal activities on foreign soil. Such a revelation would undermine the agency's ability to operate effectively and could erode public trust in law enforcement. The potential consequences of a rogue DEA operation are significant, both domestically and internationally. While the pursuit of justice is paramount, it should never come at the expense of the rule of law or the sovereignty of another nation. The Pull of Family El Mayo's surrender was driven by a powerful force, the love for his children. At 76, facing declining health, he may have chosen surrender to reunite with his family. This theory paints a more human portrait of the cartel boss. It suggests a deep-seated longing for family, a desire for connection. El Mayo's children were entangled in his web. His son, El Vicentillo, turned state's witness, bringing relief and heartache. Another son, Serafin, faced legal troubles. The desire to see his children may have been too strong to resist. This theory resonates with emotional truth. Even those in the darkest corners of society are not immune to the pull of family. The case of El Vicentillo. El Mayo negotiating a surrender to see his children has precedent. In 2009, his son Vicente Zambada Niebla was arrested and extradited to the U.S. El Vicentillo struck a deal, cooperating for leniency. His cooperation was invaluable to the U.S. government. He provided insights into the Sinaloa cartel and its operations. His testimony helped capture Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. This shows the Zambada family's willingness to engage with U.S. authorities. Section 3. A deal with the devil weighing the costs of surrender. Surrendering to the DEA, even for a man in El Mayo's position, would not have been an easy decision. It would have meant betraying his organization, risking the wrath of his former associates, and accepting the inevitability of spending his remaining years behind bars. The decision to surrender, if that's indeed what transpired, would have been a calculated gamble, a weighing of potential costs and benefits. On the one hand, surrender offered El Mayo a chance to see his children, to mend fractured relationships, and to potentially secure better treatment for his declining health. The U.S. prison system, while far from ideal, offered certain amenities and medical care that might not have been available to him in hiding or in a Mexican prison. On the other hand, surrender meant relinquishing his power, his freedom, and potentially his legacy. It meant becoming a pawn in the hands of his enemies, a source of information to be exploited by the DEA. It also meant facing the scorn of his former allies, those who might view his surrender as an act of cowardice or betrayal. The decision to surrender, if that's what El Mayo ultimately chose, would have been a testament to the power of family the lengths a father would go to for even a glimmer of reconciliation and connection. It would also be a stark reminder of the high price of a life spent in the drug trade, a world where loyalty is fleeting and the only certainty is betrayal. Section 4. Unraveling the Truth, the Enduring Mystery 
The circumstances surrounding El Mayo's arrest remain shrouded in mystery. The theory of a surrender driven by a father's love holds emotional resonance, but it doesn't explain El Chapo's son on the plane or Ovidio Guzman's prison transfer. The truth is likely far more complex, a tangled web of competing narratives and hidden agendas. Despite the lack of definitive answers, the theories offer insights into the Sinaloa cartel, the reach of the DEA, and personal motivations driving life-altering decisions. Whether El Mayo was kidnapped, captured, or surrendered, his arrest marks the end of an era, a turning point in the drug war saga. Unraveling fact from fiction. Each theory about El Mayo's arrest tells a compelling story. It's crucial to separate fact from fiction and question the motives behind these narratives. The official narrative suggests a power struggle within the Sinaloa cartel. This theory oversimplifies the cartel's complex dynamics. El Mayo was not easily manipulated, he commanded respect across the cartel. The rogue DEA operation theory taps into distrust of U.S. law enforcement. A full-scale kidnapping without Mexican complicity is unlikely. The surrender theory driven by familial love struggles with timeline inconsistencies. Examining the plausibility of each theory. Consider the weight of evidence, both circumstantial and concrete. The kidnapping theory unravels under scrutiny. Inconsistencies in the flight path raise doubts. The rogue DEA theory lacks concrete evidence. Serious accusations need substantial proof. Without concrete evidence, it remains speculation. A negotiated surrender aligns with El Mayo's pragmatism. His son's cooperation lends credence to this possibility. Unanswered questions cloud the full picture. The truth is likely a combination of factors. Section 3. Beyond the Headlines, the Enduring Allure of Conspiracy Theories The mystery surrounding El Mayo's arrest has fueled a wave of speculation and conspiracy theories. Lack of transparency and public intrigue create fertile ground for alternative narratives. Conspiracy theories offer simple explanations for complex events. They often assign blame to shadowy figures or powerful institutions. In El Mayo's case, theories range from staged capture to deep state plots. Approach such theories with skepticism and demand transparency. The truth is often more nuanced and less sensational. Understanding power and justice requires questioning and investigating. Section 1. The Elusive Truth The arrest of Ismael El Mayo Zambada, a man who had evaded capture for over five decades, was never going to be a simple story. The circumstances surrounding his apprehension, the conflicting narratives, and the lingering questions only add to the mystique. Was he betrayed by those closest to him, kidnapped in a brazen power grab by El Chapo's son? Or did the DEA overstep its bounds to secure a high-value target? The truth likely lies within the gray areas, a combination of factors and motivations. A legacy shrouded in mystery. El Mayo's arrest marks the end of an era. He was the last of a dying breed, a cartel leader cut from a different cloth. El Mayo cultivated an aura of respect among some segments of Sinaloa society. He was seen as a man of his word, a provider for his people. His legacy is intertwined with violence and destruction. The corrosive effects of corruption are the enduring scars left by the cartel's reign. In the end, I'm not trying to tell you what to believe, just presenting the facts so you can decide what makes the most sense based on your perception. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and activate the powerful notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram where there is great content every day. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day.